And all the tech bros cried out into the night. Don't know why I started singing at the start of these, but I regret it. So I'm going to stop. kids how are you doing today did you catch the mistake i made in the title card quite recently for one of the episodes no didn't see it didn't spy it maybe you weren't paying attention at that point maybe you were ignoring the screen maybe uh, you were listening to the podcast in which case you wouldn't have even seen it in the first place it was just walked on by can't do that don't want to get demonetized on the old YouTube. I say demonetized. There's no adverts on my videos. If you ever see an advert on my video, I didn't put it there. You might get an advert in video eventually, one day. I don't know. Maybe, you know, someone will, will sponsor me in some manner. Some lonely soul will be like, oh, hey, we should pay that guy money. He's got the right vibe in order to do whatever it is we do. Maybe Concrete. Concrete could sponsor me, you know. Acme. Acme, hit me up. We'll do a deal. I don't know. Actually, no, I don't know. Don't, let's not let's not say that. Let's not say I'll do a deal. I'm going to need to uh, know more about the ethics of your company before we let you slide into these concrete DMs, so to speak. Don't know why I'm checking my watch. Just kept my hand out there. Just checking my watch as we go into this. So why did all the tech boys cry out into the stratosphere? As it were. Well, so I was reading a quote recently, and I, it's a, a quote which I had said to me, I believe, at one, at one point uh, or another, um, which came from the tech industry, which I always find interesting. Sometimes you don't know where quotes come from. Sometimes quotes just kind of sneak up on you. Um, I, I think I once wrote a piece about the, uh, the phrase, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Now, why do I know the phrase, a mind is a terrible thing to race? Well, I know the phrase, mind is a terrible thing to race, because of a film called Small Soldiers, which I'm really learning as I get older, that not a lot of people saw Small Soldiers. And that is a tragedy in media circles, okay? Because that film is great, and it still holds up today. If you don't believe me, screw you. But that film's great. But it has a phrase in it, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Now, I knew this because Major Chip has it in that film, says that line. And I thought to myself, that's a great little line. Let's throw that into something. But where does it come from? I feel like I've heard that before. That seems too good for the sheer writing of a children's film about animatronic toys. So I looked it up, and what did I find? I found that that phrase was used in college advertising to get people from black neighborhoods to apply to college, telling them that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. So, what I'm saying is, you never really know where these phrases come from, and some of us have been using them for years. Some of us have been using, you know, different lines and phrases which we don't know the origin of, and that's dangerous. You should always know what the words coming out of your mouth, where they came from, because if you don't, they could be linked to something bad. They could be used in the wrong manner. I often see it with politicians. They'll use a word or a phrase which has come out and then they'll secretly be found out that the Nazis used it. And then they'll go, oh, well, I'm not a Nazi supporter. I'm like, then you should have researched that quote. You should have used that phrasing. I do research my own working. But what do I say? So there's a phrase. There was a phrase which came out of the tech industry which was spoken to me and I at the time I thought, yeah, that's a great phrase. You know, that that symbolizes everything which I, I thought was right at the time um, in the job I do and the day-to-day -day of the things which I do. And it seemed to make sense. And even in my, my life, you know, I looked at it and I applied it to different bits and aspects of my life at the time. This was during pandemic. Um, I say that like that implements in, implicates every situation. Suddenly that explains all actions. And it does. It's a conceptual like little trigger. Any any landmark event in human history, you look at it and you say, well, this was during this period, and suddenly a bunch of stuff just falls into place. This is one of those cases. During pandemic, I was told this, and I was like, yep, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. This this is completely rolling out. So what phrase am I on about? I haven't even told you yet. The phrase I'm on about is, done is better than perfect. Okay? Done is better than perfect. This is a phrase which 
came from the tech industry. And it came from, I think it was uh, one of the major directors, shareholders, C whatever's of uh, Meta. A, uh, I'm really struggling to remember my name. I'm going to Google it. Remember my name. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Sorry is better. Yes, I say the words as I'm typing them. Sheryl Sandberg said, done is better than perfect. Coined that phrase, came out with it, and the tech industry went, yes! Perfect. Exactly what we want. Done is better than perfect. And what this related to was this idea that you have these apps, and you have these programs, and you have these things which have all these bugs in them, and mistakes in them, and they're not entirely user-friendly, and they, they're weirdly designed, and the code is broken, and they push it out into the world, and you say, hey, yeah, done is better than perfect. It's out in the world, people can start enjoying it, and we can fix it on the fly. That's why done is better than perfect, and that's why it's really popular in that industry, because... Yeah, for the most part, that that was true for a long while. Whilst the tech boom was kind of happening and the internet was kicking off, not while well, the internet. This was years after the internet. It's just like when stuff like Foursquare and MySpace were all about. You know, this this was this was the start of it. This was everyone go. No, we just need to get the ideas out there. We need to get the product out there. See people engage with the product. If we get people to engage with the product, then that product can have money pushed towards us. We can afford more stuff, and we can afford better code, and we can afford better machines and learning, and have bigger servers. Blah 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 blah. However, it's flawed. It's a great phrase. It's pithy, some would say. Pithy little slogan, as Roy Zimmerman would say. But it's wrong. Logically, it's wrong. On some level, I agree with it. Right? On some level, conceptually, the message makes sense. Done is better than perfect. It's meant to encourage you to not get caught up on the little things. Not get caught up on the idea of striving for perfection so you never release anything. Right? You're never going to fix all things. You're never going to solve all areas. You're never going to sand all the bumps on whatever you're trying to sand. You're never going to get every little bit of frosting done on the cake. You're not. You're just not. There's, there's no way around it. You can't do that. But done. Done is the wrong word, right? Isn't it? Done is better than perfect. Finished is what it's saying. Done. Finished. Don't need to do any more to it. Done is better than perfect. I disagree, Cheryl. I know I'm nobody. I know... You know, I'm just a little voice with a little microphone. I know there is CEO bros and brosesfs sitting around going, No! It's another white boy with a podcast. But it's wrong. Sorry. Conceptually, it's, it's, it's just wrong. It's, it's not, it, what's interesting about this is it's a great phrase for artists. It could be the phrase for a lot of artists to consider. Um, who do? have anxiety about everything, who sit around and think, oh, well, you know, I can't show this drawing off, it's not quite perfect yet, or I can't send this painting out, it's not quite perfect yet, and they keep titivating it up with little dubs of paint here, little re-edits, re-sound mixes, little audio mixes. I was recently watching a video on Twitter, which was about uh, an artist who'd been umming and ahhing over this song for ages and ages and ages, and they, they kept re rebalancing it and re reshaping it and then they sent a cut through to a friend and the friend was like this is amazing the sound on this is incredible the work you've done is incredible and it turned out that they'd sent them the wrong file and they'd sent them an edit from months and months ago they'd spent months titivating as my mother would say months just tweaking blending which wasn't needed the song was great to begin with probably will continue to be yeah. and even now even myself you know it's things take time and when you've been staring at it so close to the blackboard you forget there's a whole picture out there there's a whole view of the wall which you're completely missing because you're too focused on the minutiae and the, the, the slogan works for that it's, it works as you know done is better than perfect but I disagree. 
I still disagree. There's no real way around it. You know. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't think you should obsess on the details. I think this podcast is probably an example of that. Don't think you should obsess on the details. Sorry, just checking that that's recording. Um, and I think dawn is the wrong word, though, right? Because essentially what you're saying is speed is much more important than quality. And to some extent, when deadlines are involved, finance is involved, people are involved, that could be true. But on the other side of it, what you're saying is also bad is better than perfect. Done but bad is better than perfect. Because if you look at society and you look at how things are done, finished, finalized, shot out into the world, we are getting a lot of bad. We're getting a lot of just awful products, designs, trailers, books, music, governments. All these things are aiming for done. They're aiming for draw a line in the sign. They're they're aiming for don't talk about this anymore. I think we see this a lot with social issues. No, I don't think it. I know we see this with a lot of social issues. The line I hear most is like, people want to keep talking about this. Why can't they just draw a line on the sign? Why do they keep going on about this over and over and over again? Well, maybe because the line you've drawn in the sand is bad. It's not good. It's It's done, but it doesn't solve the problem which was presented in the first place. And that's a huge issue. That's a point where you should be considering the final product. If done is still not good, then it should not be released, right? That's, to me, that's a better phrase. We shouldn't be aiming for done is better than perfect. We should be aiming for good is better than perfect. It's something which, you know, I think, I mean, I relate to artists quite a lot. It's hard to take on, and it's hard to break that idea in your head, because you have a vision in your head. You have an idea of what you want to produce and how it will look and how the world will look upon it, and you want to make sure that that's not misinterpreted. But I found this as a big learning lesson and a big methodology lesson to myself when I was making Burt, and I'm currently working on Burt 2. Hey, by this point, I may have even announced a, like a pre-order for it. But Burt 1 is a great example of this. I was trying so hard for perfect. I'd written the script, I wrote the script twice, and then I wrote it again. And then I thought to myself, hmm, well maybe I can add more to it, and maybe I can remove this. And I started revitalizing areas of it, redoing it over and over again, until the point where I was like, no, I just need to draw this. Let's get it out of my head, let's draw it, let's see how it looks drawn. And then I drew it, and then I edited it, and I inked it, and all that kind of stuff, and then I produced the first issue. And you know what, the first issue isn't perfect. It's filled with, you know, spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes, printing mistakes, all kinds of mistakes. But it wasn't bad. It was just good, in my view. So good enough to release. And by doing that, I got feedback on it. I got feedback on the content that was in it on the mistakes I'd made, the things which didn't work perfectly, the things which didn't gel or balance or land how they should have. And now, while I'm working at Burt 2, I'm re-editing the first book. And it's very easy to look on that and think to yourself, you know what, I'm a huge failure. Right? I'm having to do a second version of this. I said it was great the first time. I convinced people to spend money on it the first time. And yeah, that's true, because it was good. Now I'm just correcting those mistakes. I'm creating a polished version. I've had time to grow, learn, process. A lot of the edits I'm making are just to dialogue boxes. And it's because I've learned better methods for dealing with these things. I've learned new technologies since the last time I created and graphic designed this. And I think that's a very key part of every process we have. I think, weirdly, the car industry is a huge example of this, right? And I think something which I've discussed with my dad a few times, is the amount of car manufacturers who will make a model of a car, put it into mass production, put it out into the world, and then discover only once it's out in the world that there is a problem with part of the car. There is a problem 
with some aspect of the engineering, some piece which was put in there, and then they have to issue an e-recall for that part or a free replacement for that part. And so on the next model, they don't do that. They change that, they modify it. And you saw it a lot when cars were really volatile in the industry. And you know this was like the 80s and 90s, industry was huge, processing was huge. And manufacturers were aware of this, but they were very much along the lines of, well, if it's good and it looks good, then we can put it out into the world and we can let the world kind of beta test the vehicle we've built. Why can't that be the same for art? And I'm not talking about, you know, George Lucas's 50 million edits of Star Wars or anything like that. What I'm talking about is just the idea of getting your art out into the world and getting it out to the to a point where you can just let the world tell you if you need to edit it. It saves you a lot of work as well because, and I've said this before, there's going to be no harsher critics than strangers. And at some point, you will start to worry on things if things are getting through message-wise, if things are good enough artistically. And you just might not have a clear vision. You know? So let someone else measure it. Let someone else come in and say, hey, you know what, yeah, this, this, this is good. I recently sent Bert to, to a friend of mine, Jack. He's been on the podcast. Shout out to Jack if he still listens. And he proofed it because I'm terrible at grammar. And he proofed it and he left me little notes along the way about things which he enjoyed, jokes he got, things which he didn't understand. And I found that really valuable. I found that valuable because I've been so close to it and so editing it and so deeply ingrained in every single word and every single line and wondering how's this going to get printed and will the shades pick up that I just ignored whether people would really enjoy it. And it forced me to flip back through it and make sure it was doing what I wanted on like a blank face read level and it's doing what I want it as far as I know. So it's good enough. And I'll put it out into the world and I'll start working on book three. If you think that's a bit of a cop-out and you think, well, yeah, Graham, anyone could do that. Anyone can put something out into the world and then edit afterwards. Let me ask you this about processes and processes, however you want to pronounce it. If, let's say you were going to approach something for the first time, or even not for the first time, just from a different aspect of something which you do, right? And I'm going to use cooking as my example. Let's say you know how to cook. Let's say you know how to make a, like an absolute banging stew. Or you can make soup. Or I might wear all these things liquid based. I don't know. You know how to cook steak. You know how to roast vegetables. You know how to use an oven. All those things. You know how to do it. But you don't bake. Right? You don't bake. You just never never tried it. Never never put yourself forward to make pastry. Never thought of making a sponge in your entire life. You don't bake. So the first cake you make, even if you follow the recipe, is that cake gonna be perfect? No. It's not. It's basically not possible to be perfect. Okay? It could taste really good. It could. You follow a recipe, you keep it simple, it could taste really good. But it's not going to be perfect. Because you're learning your oven. You're learning how things work, you're learning temperatures, you're learning scales, you're learning how materials work together, how mix works together, how it pours, how to tell if it's done. All of these new skills, which are piling on top of this cake, hoping that it'll be perfect. It'll come out first time, it'll be absolutely not a single burn line on it, not a symbol, single tear in the pastry sheet or anything like that. You're hoping for perfect. And what you're going to get is good. I mean, you could screw it up, but what you're going to get is good. And that's good enough to serve friends, good enough to show people, good enough to say, hey, made some scones at the weekend. They turned out okay. What's wrong with aiming for that, right? I think something which we've lost is this idea that some things can be good. Not everything is groundbreaking, moves the medium along, violates the user, anything like that. Sometimes it's worth for the things which aren't on the grand scheme being good. Even large-scale projects sometimes can just be good. There's a perception of hiding your mistakes online. And I recently discussed this in the Don't Show You Working, or Nobody Won't, No Will Pay You For Your Working podcast, is that, you know, 
no one really wants to pay for the process. No one really wants to pay for being shown how something was made. And to that sense, we're hiding the mistakes. We're hiding all the things which go wrong to get something to the plate. We're hiding how many times you had to reread the recipe because you weren't sure what fold in eggs meant. Right? We hide that because at the end of it, you're presented with a cake. And if it tastes good, then why do you care? Right? We worry in so much about it. I will happily sit and point out all the mistakes in my comic. Because those were mistakes which I made and things which I've learned on and things I moved on to. I know getting proofing is much more valuable to me than I previously thought it was because I just don't catch those errors. I know that when printing it, certain printers will do better jobs than other printers. Those are things which we know. I did a video a while back about how having 1% of an idea is so much better than never creating an idea, right? And this plays perfectly into it. I won't say good is 1%, good's more like maybe 5 or 10%. But if you're creating an idea, you want to make something, want to do something, want to push something into the world or try or do something new for yourself, you should always aim for good. Because good gives you a point to work from. Good gives you a base that you can stand on and say, hey, this isn't as stable as I thought it was. This cake's not as good as I thought it was, but I still got cake. This drawing's not as good as I thought it was, but I'll put it online and maybe people will like it anyway. Maybe they'll like the concept and the artwork won't be as important to them as I thought it was going to be. And that's even more valuable. Done is better than perfect is wrong. Done is better than perfect is a scapegoat pushing bad things out into the world and saying we were under pressure we were under pressure to deliver this and so forth we delivered it it's like, yes we delivered it but what you delivered was bad it wasn't good it wasn't perfect you were just so obsessed with the done that you ignored everything else there's different approaches to the thing I understand that but Good is better than perfect is a good starting point. Aim for that 1% on the loading bar. Aim to get things out. Trust that if you think it's good, some people may think it's great. And then you might even surprise yourself. Hopefully that helps. I'll talk to you guys later.